This is a $38 red light therapy device that's putting out 60 watts of power. You can spend hundreds or thousands of dollars to purchase the same thing, or you can make it yourself with the plans in this video. Now, red light therapy involves shining light between six and 700 nanometers, which is just red light on your skin, uh, and sometimes 880 nanometer infrared light. Purported health benefits are myriad, uh, you know, wrinkle reduction, skin health improvement, as well as maybe uh, reducing soreness on joints. I've read some of the scientific papers and it's compelling. There is possibly something there, but more science needs to be done before something can be definitively said. So I'm not an evangelist for red light therapy. I can't tell you how to use this and what benefits you should expect. But my wife wanted a red light therapy device. She's been seeing it in her Instagram feeds and wanted one of these things. And so I looked into it and it's just a 660 nanometer wavelength light. And that is a really common red LED. Uh, there are hundreds, thousands probably, of red LEDs at 660 nanometer wavelengths, different power, different form factor. Uh, they're already out there. So making one of these things is not terribly difficult. So I went ahead and built two different versions of it and it turned out really well. Uh, the total cost of the parts here is $38. This is a 3D printed shell where I was able to wind all of the LEDs and mount them inside of this thing. And uh, in this video, I'll show you how this is assembled and the links to the uh, 3D printed files are in the description below. Everything's free. When you compare what you're getting here to how much you would pay if you were to buy this commercially, this is a steal. So let's have a look. What is this exactly? Um, if you look closely here, these, each one of these little white things is a pack of three LEDs. This is actually just an LED strip that's been wound around and around. And when we turn this on and zoom way in, you can actually see the three LEDs. There's three red LEDs that light up in every one of those white spots. So this is a 16 foot long strip of LEDs that I've wound around in concentric circles until it gets to the middle here. And then it pops through this 3D printed case to the back side. Now on the back side here, this is the cover for the power supply. This is taking in wall power and putting out 12 volts. Uh, this is a 60 watt power supply and this puts out 60 watts of power. This thing over here is exactly the same, but on this one, the LEDs face out rather than in towards the center. That changes the focal point of these two things. Now this case right here was printed to be 200 millimeters across. That's the most common size of 3D printer that's out there. So I think just about anybody can find a 3D printer at your library or your local makerspace and be able to print something like this. And there's little concentric grooves that are in there. And that's actually what this LED strip sticks to. Now this one over here is quite a bit larger. Uh, it's almost 400 millimeters across. So you're gonna need a really large 3D printer to make this work for you. But it does have a different use case. And if you can get access to a large 3D printer, this is another one that's worth making. It's the exact same power supply on the back and the exact same LED strip in the middle. They both put out 60 watts worth of power. To power this thing, you just plug it into the wall or you put it into a power strip like you heard there and click it on. Uh, the power supply starts putting out 12 volts of power and this thing lights up. Now, after about 10 minutes of use, and I cite 10 minutes because that's a commonly um, discussed time for red light therapy. After about 10 minutes, this gets warm, but not hot. And uh, that means that most of our power is actually going into light rather than heat, which is a good thing. Uh, we want this to be you know, efficient, uh, and it, it does seem to be so, very efficient. It's putting out nearly all light and not actually heating up all that much. So most of what we're putting into this is going to be light that actually hits our face. Uh, this one here, as I mentioned, all of these uh, LED strips are turned on end, so they're sort of facing their light towards the middle. The focal point is probably somewhere right around here. So an obvious use case for this thing would be, you know, you can put an elbow or a knee into it or even your entire face or your scalp if that's what you want to do. It's going to be used very close up though. So um, probably, you know, held in place. Whereas this is much, much larger and all of these LEDs are outward facing. Because it's so much larger, I didn't have to turn the LEDs on end. I could actually just wind it around and around inside there. And the, since the light is coming out, the focal point is probably some more, somewhat more like out here. So if you were to prop this up on your desk while you were working, you could get red light therapy from this uh, you know, while you're sitting there. So now that you know how this works, let's see how it's built. The first thing to start with is the 3D models. They're linked in the description below. As I mentioned, this should fit on any standard uh, 3D printer out there. This one requires a really big one. I used a Cobra 2 Max from Anycubic. Uh, these are both printed in PLA, 10% infill, 
no brim, and no supports. Um, if that didn't make sense to you, which it didn't to me <laughs> about a year ago, I was new to 3D printing also. Uh, basically, you take the models that are linked below and you have to turn it into something that your printer can use. It will be specific to whatever printer you find. So um, I will put a link in the description down below so that you can learn a little bit more about 3D printing and take these STLs and turn them into something that your 3D printer can use. For those who are already familiar, those are the instructions that you need. Uh, this is printed as two separate files because it won't print on one standard 3D printer. This one over here is just one file where the, the power supply cover, this thing right here, is actually included in this print because you have enough build area on one of those large printers to, to go ahead and stick it all on one. Now that you have your 3D printed files, um, you know, in hand, like actual plastic here, like this, um, you're going to want to install the LED strip. And it's slightly different for these two. This one over here, I actually wound it through these little, uh, these little keepers right here, and then I plugged it in through this hole right here, and then I wound backwards. So um, taking a look at how that, uh, that works, it should uh, complete its last loop and run out of LED strip right here. You can see that at the end here, there's actually a plug on this. This is a more standard LED plug. This is what would be usually used to plug it into a power supply. Uh, I went ahead and kept it on. You could cut it off if you wanted and like tape it off, but I went ahead and kept it on just in case I want to use it at some time later. Instead, I took the other end of the LED, which is this bare red and black wire, and I was able to plug that directly into my power supply. Um, as I was winding this in place though, as soon as I got to right here, I actually pulled the back of this uh, LED off. There, you see there's like a little bit of red backing there. That keeps the sticky um, from being exposed. As soon as I got to about here, I started pulling off that red backing, and so my LED strip is actually stuck to these little grooves that you see in here all the way around. So that keeps that LED in place on this one. Now if you look over here, um, these keepers these keeper strips of, of PLA, uh, they actually keep our LED in place for us. We don't have to take off the sticky back, so I did not take the sticky back off of any of those. Instead, the process for this one was to start at the end here and push it through all the way down until I ran out of LED strip and again, put it right through the hole. And the same thing here, uh, I kept the plug just in case I want to use it at some point and I put those bare wires through. Now the next strip, uh, step that you do, once you have that done, you take your power supply right here, you put it on the back side of this, and I actually had to force screws in. I didn't have holes pre-cut for this because I didn't know exactly where they'd end up. So I didn't actually uh, hard code where these holes for this screw and this screw should go. You should just push them in with a screwdriver. It's PLA, you can, you can drive right into that. <clears throat> so you get your power supply mounted, and you can actually make sure that this will fit over it at that point. I used uh, three inch uh, deck screws. You could use drywall screws that are number eight. That way they're thick enough to actually sort of grab into these holes right here. So you get your power supply mounted, and then you have to put in all of these core, uh, wires. Now we already talked about this. This is the hot, the, the 12 volt, and this is the zero volt or ground coming from our LED strip. These things right here are actually just an extension cord. I cut off the end of an extension cord, or you can buy them pre-cut, but you can see over here, this is the other end of this is just a regular wall plug. I cut off the end, strip the wires, and this is hot, neutral, and ground that are going in there. And this right here pops up. You just screw those screws in place, secure your wires down, and then when you're all done with that, you put this cover in place. Uh, make sure that you have this little end right here. It's got a, a gap for the wire to come out. You put it right there, screw it down into place, and that will protect your wires from wandering fingers accidentally getting in there. On the back side of this big one, it's exactly the same story. So I've got a, uh, an extension cord going in there. The wires are protected, and that's all there is to it. So there you have it. This is a really simple uh, build. It's a 3D print, stick some LEDs on and put some power to it. And it's a great result, you know? Um, this thing is very powerful and it undercuts what's out there on the market by hundreds or even thousands of dollars for the same thing. Let me know what you think in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe for more unique and useful do-it-yourself builds.